Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the third taxed asset, the valuation allowance. First, we need to understand to make sure we understand what is a deferred taxed asset. Well, the deferred tax asset is an asset. It's clearly stated in the in the name. Now, what is an asset? An asset it's something that's gonna benefit the company in the future. How do a deferred taxed asset benefit the company in the future? Well, you're gonna have lower taxes, you're gonna have tax savings, you're gonna to have tax benefits in the future as a result of a temporary difference now if you don't know what a deferred tax asset is please go to the prior session because in this session we assume you know what a deferred tax asset is we're going to be focusing on the valuation allowance but the point is we have to remember the third tax asset is an asset and just like any asset like inventory just like any asset like receivable just like any asset like property plant and equipment just like any asset like investments we have to be conservative when we report those assets we cannot if they are under if they are over reported overstated we have to reduce them to their true value for example in inventory we have an account called allowance to reduce inventory to write down our inventory our receivable we report receivable at the net realizable value we reduce receivable by the allowance for doubtful account for property plant and equipment we have we write them down through impairment for investments we have a valuation allowance as well so what is a valuation allowance? Basically, it's a reserve account to reduce the third taxed asset. Just like when we report inventory at a reduction, account receivable, property, plant, and equipment. Also, the third taxed asset is an asset. And if we don't think, if it's more likely than not, so this is what we ask ourselves. Is it more likely than not, which is 50% or more chance, that the deferred taxed asset will not be realized, then we have to reduce the deferred taxed asset by the valuation allowance. Simply put, if you don't reduce your valuation, your DTA, then your assets are overstated. And that's not what we want to do. As accountant, we are conservative. Our numbers should reflect reality. And this is what is it, what's a valuation allowance is. It's an account that's going to reduce the third taxed asset when needed. The best way to illustrate the concept is to actually look at an example. Adam Company has a deferred taxed asset with a balance of 80,000 at the end of 20x1 due to a single cumulative temporary balance of 400,000. Well, if I take 400,000, I multiply it by 20% tax rate, I'm going to get 80,000. Now, the tax rate is given here, but I can figure it out by saying, well, if I have a deferred tax asset of, of 80,000 as a result of a temporary difference of 400,000, if I take 80,000 divided by 400,000, I'm going to get 20%. So the first thing is in, tax, in, in year X1, I do have a deferred tax asset of how much? Of 80,000 as a result of this temporary difference. At the end of X2, the same temporary difference increase to a cumulative amount of, of, of a cumulative amount of 500,000. So this 400,000 increased to 500,000. So the difference in, increased. So the difference is 100,000. Taxable amount for 20X2 is 900,000 and the tax rate is 20% for all years, which is kind of, I figured it out for the 80,000, but this is what we are told. So the question is, what is the D DTA balance for 20X2? Journalize the 20X2 income tax related entry. Assume more likely than not that 12% of DTA will be unrealized. We're going to be answering those three questions, question by question. But before we proceed, if you are watching this recording, most likely you are an accounting student or a CPA candidate looking for some additional help. If you are, please visit my website, farhatlectures.com. I can provide you with additional resources. I can help you do better. Whether you are taking a CPA review course, which you keep, I don't replace, or you are taking an accounting course, and I have practically... All of your accounting courses covered. I provide lectures, multiple choice, true false, that, that, that's going to help you do better, whether you are taking an accounting course or studying for your exam. If you're studying for your exam, CPA exam, my resources are, are aligned with your backer, Wiley, Roger, Gleam, or Miles. I do also give you access to 1,500 previously released AI CPA questions with detailed solution. In addition to thousands of multiple choice practice questions, if you have not connected with me, on LinkedIn, please do so. Take a look at my LinkedIn recommendation. Like this recording. Share it. If you're watching this, it means you need this help. 
benefit other people, share it with other people, connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, and I started a CPA exam support group on GroupMe. Please join us. So let's take a look at the first example. What's the DTA balance for 20X2? We know from 20X1, we have 80,000. The temporary difference increased from 400,000 increased by 100,000 to 500,000. So simply put, the 100,000 additional increase in temporary difference will be subject to another 20% deferred tax benefit, 20,000. Therefore, the deferred tax asset as of X2 is 100,000. So the answer to the deferred tax asset is 100,000, the balance as of 20 X2. 80,000 that's given to us and as the result of this additional increase from 400,000 to 500,000 of the temporary difference, we had an increase of 100,000 times 20%, it's gonna give us 20,000. I should have used a different number than 100,000 because I don't want to have two 100,000, okay? So the DTA balance is 100,000. Journalize the 20X2 income tax related entry. Now, remember how I, how I always instruct you to prepare this entry the first thing you do is you come up with income taxes payable so first you have to find out how much you are paying to the government because this is the easy not the easiest one this is how you should prepare the journal entry income taxes payable to find out your income taxes payable you have to find your taxable income luckily your taxable income is giving as nine hundred thousand if we take nine hundred thousand times twenty percent you're gonna have to pay the irs one hundred and eighty thousand this is your income taxes payable well the deferred taxed asset we already know that deferred taxed asset will increase by twenty thousand we already figured this one out one hundred thousand times twenty percent now your income tax expense which is your income tax expense is 180 minus 20 which is 160 this is your income tax expense and this is the entry so this is your the amount that you have to pay the irs this is the future savings and because you have future savings your income tax expense is lower now by 160 thousand now obviously when the deferred tax asset would reverse it means once we start to credit the deferred tax asset it will it's going to increase your income tax expense okay so this is basically what we are looking for for question two for question two it's also worth mentioning that how you come up with the 160,000 your income tax expense it's 180,000 and I showed you minus 20 equal to 160 also from a T account perspective remember DTA and DTL the corresponding entry to them is income tax expense so if i'm increasing dta i'm reducing my income tax expense therefore i am reducing my income tax expense by twenty thousand and increasing my dta by twenty thousand in future years in future years which is let me put it in a different color so show you, show you what's going to happen in future years when i start to reduce my dta it's going to increase my income tax expense but what's going to happen is I reduce, when I credit my DTA, when I'm using my DTA, I'll pay less to the IRS because now I am using my tax savings, which I am booking now, I will be using in the future. I just want to show you what's going to happen in the future. Now, let's take a look at number three. Number three is saying, assume that more likely than not, that 12% of the DTA will not be will not be realized. So this is what we're dealing with, the allowance entry. So if 12% will not, uh, 12,000 will not be realized, what's going to happen is this. We're going to increase our income tax expense by 12,000, reduce our allowance, I'm sorry, increase our allowance for deferred taxes by 12,000. Simply put, what we're saying, remember we had a DTA of 100,000. What we're saying, 12,000 of this will not be realized. Simply put, we're not going to be profitable enough to have the tax savings. That's what we're saying. Well, as a result, what's going to happen? We have to increase our income tax expense now and reduce our allowance. So this is how we show things on the balance sheet. We'll show DTA at the at the uh, gross amount, which is this was question one, what was the DTA, minus less the allowance. The allowance is a contra asset. It's going to reduce our asset, just like the allowance for doubtful account, just like the allowance to reduce inventory. It's a contra asset. And this is what we were discussing earlier, the allowance for uh, 
the allowance for DTA is to reduce DTA. Therefore, DTA is showing net of the allowance of 88,000. What should you do now? Go to farhatlectures.com, work MCQs, work true false. Don't shortchange yourself. You are making an investment in your accounting career. You are making an investment in your CPA. Throw everything at it. It's going to pay you dividend down the road in terms of income, career. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.